My name's Alex and today I'm going to be learning about beekeeping in Sweden. Yesterday evening I took a hire car from the airport out of the city into the countryside. I arrived at this beautiful place. I stayed in this little hut last night and this morning I'm going to take a short walk down the road and meet up with a Swedish beekeeper. I think this is where a beekeeper lives. There's all this beekeeping equipment <laughs> just here. I always get so nervous knocking on people's doors. Hey! Welcome. Come on in. Good to meet you. Same. Is it Calais or is it Carl? Whatever. Whatever, you don't, you don't mind? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, come on in. Thank you. you. Don't have to take off your shoes. You sure? Yeah. Calais started keeping bees 15 years ago, but before his beekeeping obsession took hold, his line of work was something quite different. When I was young, I made my living playing and busking in the street actually. I figured I'd get a proper job, so I became a real estate broker. When you're in that world, uh, the law is always make bigger and bigger deals. I was sort of playing with the big guys, and then I figured that a billion deal is the same thing as a thousand kroner deal, doesn't matter. Yeah, I burned out. So I had a three months sick leave and after the fog sort of lifted, I realized that um, it was time to focus on doing things that I liked. Naive as I am, I figured I can have a couple of hives in, in the yard and they'll sort of be uh, an income that I don't have. They can stand there in the corner and I can harvest hundred one year, once a year and make a little money of them. It's been more difficult than I thought. So I started figuring, trying to figure out how to, to go about building a business out of it. Over the past 15 years, Calais turned his love for beekeeping into his main source of income. And today I was going to follow him around the Swedish countryside, getting an insight into life as a beekeeper. I've got a sponsor for this video, uh, so I can keep making these videos instead of getting a a proper job. The sponsor for this video is BetterHelp, which is an online service that offers professional therapists who are trained to listen and help you out if you're struggling with something, no matter how small or large your problem. It's good to talk to someone when you're in a not so good place and with BetterHelp you can contact your therapist very easily through either phone call, video call or unlimited messages. You can change your therapist at any time, so if you don't like one, you can very easily switch to another, as BetterHelp offers a broad network of over 20,000 therapists. And you can do this with no additional charge. I've tried it out for the last couple of months and it is a super simple and easy uh, website to use. Messaging and getting in contact with a therapist couldn't be much quicker or easier. Join the three million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with a BetterHelp therapist and get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash just Alex. Link is in the description. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting this channel and sponsoring this video. The first job for the day involved heading to his storage unit and having a bit of a tidy up because it turns out that as a beekeeper you need quite a lot of equipment. A beekeeper with 100 to 200 hives, you need lots of honey supers to go on top of those hives during the, like, the nectar collecting season and uh, this is his place where he stores all this stuff and there are boxes upon boxes. So in the summer, these boxes will be like on the beehives, but when the bees have collected the nectar and the honey is harvested, they need to be stored somewhere. And uh, yeah, look at this, I'm surrounded by honey supers. I have to use some discretion when you edit this. Uh, don't make me too, look too sloppy. <laughs> and that, that's my cleaning work for, for the winter. So that's one of your winter jobs, cleaning, yeah. cleaning everything. The cleaning process is scraping off the, the wax, uh, cleaning the boxes inside. 
maybe painting them inside if it needed. Pressure washer every frame. The number box is about 10 frames, so it's quite a lot of work. How many days a week are you working? This time of year, seven days. Well, so I'm work eight to ten hours, uh, seven days a week. But then come winter, I probably work five, six hours a day, four or five days a week. One of the main jobs at this time of year in July is pulling the full honey boxes off the hives. And this can be hard work as one full super of honey can weigh up to 30 kilograms. Keller has just told me that I should definitely put on a suit because this hive, which we're gonna open up, they might stain. So I use, I use uh, an escape board, but I also have a mini blower with me. So I try to get as many of them out as possible. An escape board is basically a piece of wood that goes under the supers that you want to take off the hive. The board has a special mechanism that only allows bees to go one way. So they go out of the super and can't get back in, meaning there's a lot less bees in the supers. So that's why I use the blower to take the last This first one is the Optimist box. Not much in it. So we're pulling honey, for honey boxes for extraction. This, this box is in a poor state. So. Before the honey was brought home, Calais had to fix a problem in one of the hives. A queen bee of one of the colonies had failed to successfully mate and was only laying drones. For a colony to survive, the queen has to lay workers too, so a new queen bee would have to replace the old one. Okay. This will eventually die out. Okay, so you've got the... The queen here. There is a queen bee inside. And a uh, small entourage of three or four bees to care for her. With a drone laying queen, you don't want that queen anymore and you need no. a new one. That queen will eventually kill the hive since she, she doesn't lay any, any viable larva. And how did you acquire this particular This bee? one I raised myself. She's from my queen rearing operation. Mm -hmm. Bees can do queens themselves, uh, or rare queens themselves, but queen rearing is, uh, is basically the act of doing this yourself uh, and sort of more, more focused and uh, to, to get new queens and breeding queens. That, that is that you look for traits you like. In, um, that is, they, they are healthy, producing a lot of honey and so on. And then you actually take genetic materials, the yeah, eggs, from a hive that you which traits you like, and then you raise queens from that. And then those queens can be sold to other beekeepers or you can use them in splits, sort of to manage uh, and hopefully improve your stock. Here are a load of small boxes. Each one is a tiny colony of bees with a number of worker bees that raise the new queens. Once the queen has mated successfully, they can then be transferred into a larger colony. Put her there, let them get acquainted. Okay, time for the queen. Get the, there's a little candy plug here that the bees will eat out and then they'll get access to the queen. In, uh, take them uh, about a day or two perhaps. So during that time they can 
sort of get adjusted to the queen and her pheromone. Like this. So where does all this honey actually come from? Honey is simply nectar which has been processed by the bees and had much of the moisture removed. Once the water content is below 20%, it is considered honey that won't ferment. In particular, there are a few flowering crops that are very important for Calais and his bees. Rapeseed, because that, that is a, uh, a high yield plant, and clover, and uh, lime tree. That's uh, the ones I go for. And as well as static beehives which sit on the ground, Calais also has another clever technique of maximizing his honey harvest each year. Usually I have two trailers with 14 uh, hives on each, and that's my sort of move around uh, uh, migrating hives. One of the things I do early in the season is to make sure I have all my strongest hives on, on those trailers because they, they are going to work hard, hard, these bees. How far do your bees normally fly? I really don't know. They will sort of themselves decide whether more abundant nectar flow further away is more worth the effort than taking a less abundant closer because what happens if they fly along, um, more, a larger chunk of what they collect will go as uh, fuel for them to fly. And flying will will wear out the bees. So the bees themselves manage that. What I can do is to see to that they are located as close as possible to a good yielding nectar source. We were now driving back to Calais place to put the honey supers into a room ready for extraction. How much honey did you harvest last year? It was a bad year, about three tons, three thousand kilos. And what, and what is a good year? Uh, it would be four. Whoa. As it is now, I sell it uh, mostly to directly to consumers. So I have people coming here buying honey. We have something that's called Reko in Swedish. It's like a farmer's market but lives on Facebook. So you put up an ad, people make their orders. And every second Wednesday, I go into town for a half an hour. Every, uh, a lot of producers meet on a, on a parking lot behind uh, the central station and uh, hand out uh, the orders. And that's a much more efficient way to do a farmer's market than, than actually standing there in a whole day, spending a whole day trying to sell your honey. Have you had any disasters in your time keeping bees? Oh, yeah. Uh, one winter I lost 75% of all my hives. 75%? Yeah. Which was how many at the time? A hundred. Did you ever find out what went wrong? No. No idea. I made tests, I sent for laboratory tests and couldn't find out what it was. What many people doesn't understand is that uh, in, the, in the wild uh, a beehive doesn't survive very long because it's a very hard environment for them. And as a beekeeper, I soften that low and try to keep them going. Try to see that they, they have the best possibilities. Although you pulled off some honey earlier, there's still more you need to pull off. Yeah, approximately about a thousand kilos of honey out of the hives. The job for this afternoon was to put his skateboards in place in another one of his apiaries so Calais could then harvest more honey over the next few days. Doesn't seem like there's much in this one. Oh, a little. A little. So those boxes there are full of bees right now. Yeah. And your aim is to get as many of them out as possible. Yeah, precisely. And that is an escape board. That's an escape board. But most of them can't find their way back. So the bees go from these yeah. two honey boxes down into that. Yeah. And then these boxes are clear from bees. 
that's it. Nothing to do. No, no. That one looks heavy. Yeah, it's almost full. But this is this is good. Luckily no stings yet, which is nice. Just surrounded by bees. This looks good. This is how, how we want to Oh, you want to see it right to the top like that. Yeah. Wow. This is how we want to Whoa. So this is full of honey. Yeah, they even built in between here, but it's basically every single frame is jam-packed. That's a nice sight for a beekeeper. Yeah. This is uh, my honey, uh, and this is this is also my shop. So this is actually where where my customers come. I only learned very recently that honeybees don't just collect nectar from flowers; they also collect honeydew from an insect called an aphid. The aphids excrete honeydew, and then the bees collect it and then turn it into honey. So this is a jar of honeydew yeah. honey collected from aphids. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it has a toffee yeah. taste. Sort of. mm -hmm. Are there any other things which uh, bees collect? Uh, They'll collect anything that's sweet. A couple of years back there was some um, in the news uh, about a beekeeper that the poor guy got green honey. Someone had thrown out a lot of old candy mm -hmm. um, thinking the wild boars would eat it mm -hmm. and they probably did but uh, but bees were there too. The bees turned the candy into yeah. honey. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And ruined his uh, harvest. <laughs> oh dear. He must have got a shock when he opened up the yeah, hive and so. saw the bright green. I want to say thanks so much to Calais for showing me around. If you're interested in learning more about beekeeping, then I would definitely suggest checking out his Instagram page, which is full of really cool beekeeping videos. My time in Sweden was nearly up, but there was one more thing I wanted to do. Take a walk in the Swedish forest and look for mushrooms and berries. There could be mushrooms in there. Time to go exploring in the woods. There's a few things the Swedish woods are known for. Firstly, mosquitoes, and I am getting absolutely eaten alive right now by many of them. And secondly, are its incredible mushroom foraging opportunities. And I have just stumbled across a load of chanterelles. I spent like years in the UK looking for a good patch of these and never found many. Maybe I can pack them in my bag and take them home. I think the only way this trip to Sweden will get any better is if I see a bear or a moose. If I can stumble across a moose, I'll be very happy. Okay, it's confirmed. Sweden is the worst place to go if you don't like mosquitoes. You can't feel them when they're on your skin and like sucking your blood. I just looked down and I just saw like five all digging their blood sucking thing into my arm.
Look at these wild blueberries. Mmm. Blueberry picking in the woods is fun. Wow, Sweden, you are amazing. I absolutely loved my time there and I'm definitely going to head back soon. Thanks for watching the video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon.